I think climate change is uh, undoubtedly not just one of the biggest. I think it is certainly the most biggest. It's the largest challenge because it's a cross-cutting issue. Uh, it has implications for food security. It has implications for health, for sharing of water resources. So uh, we should really look upon it as the single biggest challenge that we face. And for Bangladesh, unfortunately, we are at the receiving end. And uh, for us, it is not uh, a distant event that may happen in the future. We are feeling the impacts now. And these impacts are actually quite grave, uh, whether it is displacement of people, whether it is uh, salinity intrusion, uh, storm surges, cyclones, flooding, the whole gamut, the whole spectrum of uh, impacts are already being felt in Bangladesh today. The dynamics are really not being controlled by the least developed countries. You know, I mean, the people who can make the changes is really the industrialized countries, the NX1 countries. So I think it's civil society in these countries interacting with civil society in countries such as Bangladesh and creating a global movement. Um, I always think back to Copenhagen during COP16. You know, there was a real uh, feel of a movement, people getting involved, energy levels were high, uh, the NGOs and civil society was very active. I think we need to regain that momentum. And it has to be a, a network across continents, across countries, in industrialized countries, as well as countries such as Bangladesh who are suffering the most. But we need to uh, look away and move away from that uh, idea of who is responsible and uh, we have to work together. I think interdependency is very important. Uh, and the solution really lies in very deep emission cuts. And these cuts have to be made now almost because if you delay too long and then let us say you have the deep cuts in 10 years from now, it's going to be too late. From the uh, European Union, expectations are very high. I think we expect a very uh, engaged a very focused, a very proactive role. Unfortunately, the way the Copenhagen uh, COP16, uh, sorry, COP15 process was uh, structured, the EU was left out of it. Uh, now that the UNFCCC process is back on track, uh, which was, the, I think, one of the successes of Cancun, we expect that in Durban, the European Union will, in fact, take the lead and the initiative and uh, make uh, pledges for reductions in emissions, which are not conditional. You know, the European Union should take the moral high ground and say that this is what is right, this is what is just, this is what is fair, and we want to set the standard. And I think uh, unconditionally they should commit rather than waiting for other countries to come forward. So I think what we are looking at are very deep cuts so that uh, ideally, um, temperatures do not increase by more than 5 degrees centigrade. I think that's the point that we're looking at. And for that to happen, you must have the commensurate cuts, deep cuts in emissions by the NX1 countries, and also, as I say, a peak year for emissions, which should not be later than 2016.